Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, June 11th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. A couple of weeks ago, I may have mentioned it, but there was a new patch available for the backup system Veeam. Well, we now have a exploit available and a detailed write-up regarding the vulnerability thanks to Xena Kerka from the summoning team. This particular exploit works against the Veeam Backup Enterprise REST API service that tends to listen on port 9398. I did a quick check on Shodan and didn't really see anything exposed here. This is, however, a classic exploit that will work great for a sort of lateral movement after an attacker is already inside your network. The vulnerability here is an authentication bypass vulnerability and since an attacker is able to authenticate as administrator anything is possible and that's why the CVSS score of the vulnerability is 9.8. The problem is that as part of the authentication handshake the attacker is able to provide the URL of the authentication service then the Veeam instance will just check with that authentication service to check if the user is authorized. This is sort of a classic issue where the attacker is providing essentially how to verify the credentials. And of course, all the attacker has to do is set up their own authentication service to verify that the attacker is the administrator. So get patching if you haven't patched already. And the register is reporting that Proofpoint has shut down the SORPS anti-spam list. This is one of the older anti-spam lists that has been around for at least 20 years, has been originally started by Michelle Sullivan, who I believe has still been maintaining this project as an employee for Proofpoint. Initially started as a university project, but then later sort of more commercialized. It's not quite clear why Proofpoint has shut down this uh, service now. It was certainly popular and the register, who is also reporting about this story, states that 200 organizations have used SORPS data lately. The biggest issue right now is other than that the data that you retrieve from SORPS is really just empty at this point, is that this particular service uh, may be sold by Proofpoint in the near future, which of course uh, could make it less reliable, less transparent, or even malicious depending on who is actually uh, buying uh, the particular assets related uh, to SORPS. If you're using SORPS for spam filtering, uh, the demise at this point shouldn't really affect you in the sense that all you get is empty data, so you're not going to block any legitimate email with SORPS gun, but I would still recommend that you disable it in your spam filters because it's not clear what will happen with it in the future. Oddly enough, the SORPS website itself does not actually state anything about the service being discontinued. And a little bit an odd instance happened in London. Apparently, some criminals set up a fake cell phone tower in order to send SMS messages to cell phones in the vicinity. These SMS messages were smishing, so trying to trick people into connecting to these phishing websites. I find it a little bit odd that it's sort of worth the effort to actually do it apparently and this may be happening more in England than it's happening here in the US but there appears to be some filtering in place that they try to avoid by being able to connect to these cell phones directly. So a little bit an issue with cell phones that they pretty much will connect to what 
ever cell tower lets them connect to them. So this has been abused in the past where uh, fake cell phone towers were usually being set up to intercept uh, communications. But in this case, it was just to send them and maybe an indicator how successful uh, these uh, smishing attacks are if it's worthwhile actually launching an attack like this. And I just mentioned yesterday about malicious Visual Studio Code uh, plugins and themes. Well, uh, as I mentioned, Visual Studio Code is not alone here. Today, a video by Joshua Knox is talking about Comfy UI and AI user interface allows you to uh, build and interact uh, with models and sort of a graphic uh, interface. Well, yes, there are code snippets that you can include, essentially little modules. And if you do so, you run this code on your system. Apparently, there are some rumors that there are some malicious modules around, but not a lot of sort of confirmation about this yet. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks for listening. Thanks for liking. Thanks for subscribing. And thanks for leaving comments and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.